everyone. Um, hey, our little, um, our little Robin is done. This is Mrs. Robin, and uh, just like the the little clip that you have seen, she is uh, a Robin that lives in my, uh, well, not in my house, but outside, in my yard, um, and so. Um, as you ping along with me, you'll hear about her and her story and what a awesome little bird that she is. And so this is uh, not a very long painting. I hope if you like Robin and you like painting birdies, you will follow with me. And uh, as always, um, I also painted some lilac bush because uh, I also tell about it in the painting because she, uh, while she was waiting for me to finish my watering so she can get my water or get the worm, um, sometimes she will hop onto a lilac bush uh, next to my uh, in my neighbor's house <laughs> and sat there and wait for me. But her nest is actually in my yard, and so it's very nice. Um, one year she actually looked like this during winter and sat on the bench outside my house in the in the cold in the winter. Now the reason why I the lilac is not so much of a lilac color, it's more pink because I know that there are pink lilac out there and so I wanted to uh, kind of use my artist's discretion to because I like the I like the color surrounding her like that and so I hope you will um, take the time and watch it through and see if you would like to paint together. The color is very simple, I will have all the color needed um, I have pink, which is magenta, which is a color that you guys uh, should, uh, if you can, invest in it. And uh, some darker purple. And uh, with Mrs. Robin, um, it's mainly pink gray sepia, a little bit of burnt umber. Uh, pink gray here, a little bit of green. And here is uh, cadmium medium and uh, uh, transparent red oxide. But you don't need to use that, you can use uh, some kind of burnt sienna if you have them. Uh, that will be good. That will be good, and uh, because I will show you towards uh, the end part of uh, painting this, how to make it more like the robin color. Anyway, uh, she's nice and fluffy here because I like to paint bird nice and fluffy. Uh, they're very cute, and uh, and so I'm glad she uh, is around and to provide for the inspiration. And uh, so go to my blog sunsetpeony.com and it will have all the color and also a line drawing of this for you to trace if you needed that. And um, uh, and uh, so um, if uh, I think that's it. And so please uh, remember to subscribe to my channel and I, I'm supposed to ask you guys to like it too. If you like it, if you like it, then like it uh, because it's supposed to be good for my algorithm on YouTube, something like that. And my daughter told me that, and so <laughs> um, uh, I am very happy to. Uh, this is going to be really fun. Uh, we will have fun painting along, and it will give us uh, uh, some uh, practice on how to layer two color. You know how I separate into segment for you guys to be easier for you to manage. And so this uh, this is very good for beginner if you want to learn how to manage the the flow of water until you are more comfortable with it, then you can be a little more aggressive, right? And so it will be very fun. And I splash some color, I put some leaf on the surrounding to make this look more like a lilac bush. Anyway, um, we will just uh, hop into the painting part, okay? Thank you so much. Okay, should we get started? Um, okay, uh, so what I'm picking up is this number two, uh, Jackson's. Synthetic brush, watercolor brush, and I'm going to go into the um, lamb's black to pick out some of the black color, just so that we can get the eyes. Sometimes, when I um, uh, since the eye is so small here, okay, so we're gonna uh, use a very fine brush and trying to leave a highlight the best that we can. But um, if we you know, made a mistake and the highlight wasn't what we want, we can always use gouache or, you know, this kind of paint pen when the painting is dry, the Sharpie, and then uh, try to um, add some, but I'm quite happy because you can see the highlight actually, even though, um, you know, in the camera I can see that. And so, the next step is I'm going into the same brush probably and go into the paint gray and pick up some of the paint gray 
and do this uh, beat area, the beak, the beak, yeah. <laughs> and so what I'm doing is I'm putting a line close to the side of the beak and then quickly go get my brush clean and then pull out the color so that it um, will give the illusion of a, of a form of the top part of the beak which is a triangle okay so that's what I like to do even though it's such a small part but um, you know seriously in the in the Asian discipline the beak and the eye and the feet you know strange enough are very very important part of the bird uh, when we paint them and so artists uh, like you know most of the Asian artists like to do that like to get that painted first okay and then we can uh, since the bottom part is also paints gray so we don't mind that the, that line that we just put is still wet so we'll just go on and fill this up and paint this area okay and just get that since it's also underneath the top beak then it can be um, in the dark and so we don't worry about that too much okay and so um, at this point um, there was two way that we can do this but I think I'm going to do with the with the um, the way that I think it will make it most pretty and uh, what I'm going to do is um, just use a uh, instead of putting a layer of yellow down which is one of the practice I do that I do a uh, cadmium uh, yellow medium down and then I put a layer of the what I use is the um, the Daniel Smith uh, uh, transparent uh, red oxide okay you can do that or you can just use the quinacridone uh, burnt orange or any burnt sienna will do okay because I just have the transparent red oxide and so I will, when I lay it down you'll be able to see the color okay so what I'm going to do is use my uh, a happy dot okay and go pick some of those up I like that I, it seems to um, give me a good representation of uh, what the bird the color is so I'm just going to do that now um, so I uh, I have uh, some very very light pencil mark um, because I think that this will be a little bit, bit more helpful to you guys is to uh, split the area of the bird up into different area okay and uh, not the area uh, the mm, this part of the uh, red oxide um, so that you don't have to manage a great big area but um, as I always say, when we do manage, uh, try to manage that, um, what we need is a bigger brush, okay? A bigger brush will uh, make bigger area easier. And so if you guys um, would like to invest in, because the happy dot is actually, you know, you can hear from the name, right? It's a dotted brush. It's a brush for dot, so it's not really that big. Okay, now, so I'm going in with a clean brush and just kind of pull the area out and um and don't worry though okay if um you know um i wouldn't i i mean i can't see what you're doing at home but i always know that you know the first layer is uh going not going to be so pretty now watercolor always go through like what i tell one of uh my uh my friend i think it's lori maybe it's lori maybe it's another one of my friend the first uh layer the first layer you usually um kind of not very happy with it okay it does always have to go through what I call kind of ugly stage okay and so don't worry okay but uh, we still wanted to separate them into areas so that we can uh, uh, we can uh, manage it easier you know because uh, you know a big brush like if I were to use like maybe this brush right you can see the size of it compared to um, what we're working with the area and so we can just um, uh, we can uh, actually uh, do a great big area right but uh, now we are going to just uh, do what we uh, just this uh, so it's uh, just uh, separate them into different areas easier to manage but you will see that as we go then we work on the second layer and uh, maybe sometime a little bit of a third layer and so it will be fine okay now uh, it looks like that this is looking a little bit redder than um, you know than the actual bird but don't worry though okay because we're going to come in with a second layer and you see we're gonna put cadmium yellow medium on on top of it now if you don't like that you can also use a uh, quinacridone burnt orange I think that's like or any burnt sienna like I said in the beginning 
okay and so don't um, uh, worry about it and uh, we can just uh, you can try out different color or whatever is in the palette that um, you think is most um, most resemble the uh, beautiful Robin okay now um, I uh, I'm I'm you know of course now I'm just in the first stage of painting so I haven't really done any of the editing yet of this bird but um, I wanted to tell you I wanted to include one of uh, my uh, the picture that my daughter took of this little inspiration of the robin you know it's in the summertime now uh, well early summer if you can call it summer and so now what I just do is I, I am sorry I just uh, take some uh, a clean brush and come and pull in some of the color and you see that I'm leaving white here and there just for the highlights okay because you know that that's uh, what I think what a colorist should do you know take advantage of uh, our you know our opportunity with the medium okay and then I'm going back in with uh, pure pig uh, not pure pigment with a uh, stronger pigment again and then I'm going to um, so there's a little bit of a highlight there actually it's not a highlight it's uh, I'm just leaving that spot which is um, you know kind of have a faint wash right here with a faint wash of the um, transparent red oxide and I, I'm going back in and dipping more color okay so as to finish pulling this color out we're gonna work it all the way to about over here okay and all these segments I'm going to draw that for you okay when you go fetch it from my block and you will have the those kind of little um, area that um, you, it will help you okay if I need that uh, if I wanted that to help me I'm definitely going to leave that there now uh, uh, a clean brush again now I'm pulling these these uh, red uh, the transparent red oxide out okay okay and so oh I was telling you that that is uh, very much uh, done for now okay for this area we have to we definitely have to uh, leave it to dry okay now uh, so we can work on this part of the of the feather that uh, the the I always call the harder part of the feather and then so that we don't have to go into this area while this is still wet okay and then it will come back okay uh, I was just telling you the inspiration of this uh, pretty little bird is uh, now okay so a clean brush I'm going in on the sepia color okay and she is uh, a mommy I just really like her um, so we will include of course in the beginning of this uh, painting uh, some of the picture uh, well actually just one little picture of hers okay she's just really really cute okay now this is um how I would like to uh, just uh, stroke 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 here okay and put in the sepia painting and then I'm going to go back in with a lighter wash of sepia and then just pull the color out over here okay and um, as she was out there in the springtime okay just like that and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some color mixing okay uh, burn umber burn umber which is uh, kind of like a brownish color okay I'm gonna put some while this is still wet okay so there will be some of the burn umber color show up okay and then uh, now we're gonna work on this area a little bit okay and uh, so she was out there and just hop the hop around and I was wondering why she's hopping uh, she's not injured she was never injured she just liked to hop I think uh, by the time I first saw her she already um, had made a nest on one of my tree and so it's very cute right now I didn't know that and you know how I find out it's a uh, kind of a little bit of a sad story so um, I just know that uh, springtime come and I'm preparing the the peonies from blooming right so I need to be out there now it's the same thing okay I do some stroke and leave some highlight you know so that uh, you can see that and then I'm going to have a wash now this is a wash of sepia color here okay a wash meaning a lighter a lighter um, a lighter not as intense pigment and then I come in and put some burn umber on there okay and so I was seeing her and she was out there hopping okay now so what we're gonna do is uh, now there's some uh, area over here and uh, still some of them had the stroke right here from the reference painting so I'm gonna just do a little bit more over here okay uh, kind of randomly but you guys can follow me uh, with the final uh, 
final painting that's done so it wouldn't be too hard for you to see what I'm thinking <laughs> and so she was out there and she was hoppity hop around okay and so I really liked that and I thought oh you know it must be a mummy bird and I know that uh, without having to uh, but it was confirmed why because there was one spring day oh about a month ago I guess maybe it's more than a month um, you know they are robins and so their eggs are Okay, do you see that? Okay, it's still kind of uh, stroke-like, okay? And so we can either use a clean brush and just try to pull the color out, okay? We'll try to do that. Or we can go in with a little bit of pigment then to help us, you know, so it's a little bit more color, more colorful here, okay? You see that? We don't try not to disturb the beautiful stroke that we just put down, okay? And just uh, let it have uh, some kind of soft line and some kind of hard line, okay? Just like that, and so just for the that few little stroke, that area is done, and so there's, there's a uh, uh, a place of dark area, and so we will just do it in a little bit, not right now, okay? Let's do this one, this one first, and so this one is um, a little bit of uh, um, different, okay? So I'm going to like with this tail feather, I'm dividing in dividing it into two part, okay? And so one side and two side because that's uh, what I see. Okay, and so this uh, on the right side, I'm going to put a, a layer of um, because these are hard feathers, so you can have harsh line. Okay, you don't want to, um, you know, uh, you know. And the other the other side, what I wanted to do is I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, but with a softer wash. Okay, the other side of the of this of the tail feather I'm gonna have a softer wash okay and I'm going to leave it there for now and then I'm going to come in if I remember and put in another layer of color on there okay now so we're gonna still let this area dry but we don't have to but I wanted to uh, since I'm on the sepia color um, I'm gonna go in and pick up some more sepia color and do the crown area okay and so still the same brush uh, quite intense of the color and then I'm going to start over here okay just lay the lay the brush kind of flattish okay and so you know as we go to this area I wanted you guys to since it's a softer feather so we wanted to um, now take care of this area between the red oxide and the sepia that is not a strict line okay because that's not how nature looks like okay we're not going to do a strict line through okay and then as we go you can you can leave some white highlight just as long as you're going towards the direction of the feather you can you can still do that okay and uh, i'm gonna pull that down here and then i'm also had this uh, into segment like uh, shapes you know different shapes areas so that we can, don't have to like i say you know i i have thought about you guys a lot and thinking about painting you know and uh, i decided that you know um i don't know if you noticed that there's something that i not start doing maybe the last few painting i like to have the um have the birds uh or anything i paint i like to develop uh, i mean uh open that into a different area so that it won't be as hard for you guys to follow along okay and this area is just like uh what i usually do okay and uh, hopefully i haven't leave it for too long and uh, I'm going to pull the color and make sure that this is a soft color, okay? A soft area. And um, if I have a harsh line, see, you can see that because I have left it. Uh, remember, I was talking to Lori, uh, one of our people here um, that follow me, that um, sedimentary color, right? I, I, I barely leave that for 30 seconds and it decides not to soften. But it doesn't bother me because I like the way it looks. But then I'm going to go in with some green. Uh, because it's a reflection of the background see and so that will kind of help us to make up some of the little bit of mistake that we make but this is not actually bad at all okay now I'm going to go in with a little light wash of pink gray okay and what I'm going to do is this area right here is not really sepia okay it's the one that is in between in, in between the breasts and face area of a robin okay so I'm gonna Put just a little bit of sepia you see i mean uh sorry burn pink gray okay and see how pretty that is and it will uh, follow uh follow along okay from down here i get a little bit it's a light wash okay that just don't need to um be very intense because 
it is not that intense in nature. So we're gonna just kind of follow and do what uh, is kind of true to nature, okay? And don't worry about this area. I'm going to come in and do something about that, okay? Okay, and I think it'll go all the way to here into the breast area. So I'm gonna do that, okay? Isn't that pretty? She's already, you know, coming into shape. Now, um, so I'm just gonna leave that alone because it's still a little bit wet and then I will kind of come back and now you can see, you know, the magic of how this will turn more into a, a pretty, a, a pretty kind of orangey, uh, peachy color breast. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm cleaning my brush and put it in the cadmium red. No, sorry, cadmium yellow medium, okay? It's a medium yellow if you have that, any kind of medium yellow, okay? Now I'm going to come in and overlay that on the top. You see, it's already changing color, right? It's kind of pretty, okay? Now, but don't cover the whole area. Leave some of the red oxide the way it is, okay? So I'm just kind of going in from the edge and kind of pulling it up and down here. Oh my goodness, you know, I, I like it. It is very pretty, and it kind of suddenly brightened up our, uh, our little robin, okay? Little robin really have a lot of color, especially when the sun is shining on it. It really is quite pretty, so we kind of wanted to uh, make sure that uh, we give, that, give her the best credit, okay? And I was out there watching her, and it was usually in the early morning, and so she really is quite glorious when the sun was shining on her. And so, since that's what I saw of her, you know and unless you're standing there and looking at her you wouldn't see it as clearly and but i just wanted to paint her that way you know of uh, her glorious self and the good mommy that she is because i think one day her heart was broken i was in the middle of telling you that story okay now uh, if you wanted to at this point you can go back with some of the red oxide and just kind of let the wet area that you just put in kind of mix color okay if you wanted to do that because then it will be a, a little bit of an orange instead of yellow medium but it's up to you if you feel confident that you you know uh, you should feel confident don't worry about messing it up you know see I'm just like kind of okay and so that's all the layer that I'm going to and I hope that this uh, uh, camcorder that I'm using giving it justice okay uh, I kind of look at it and it's like my color that I see and the color that I see on the screen is like quite different but anyway it is very glorious <laughs> the color over here but anyway one day it was a heartbroken day for her why is that because um, I saw uh, my husband came home and I saw on my driveway I went out to you know to the driveway to greet him because I was out there you know, I didn't notice. Uh, it was a very blustery uh, spring morning. Okay, I'm going back into the sepia ink with my same brush, okay? And now I'm going to do the soft layer over here. Over this layer, okay? And so this area, I'm just going to do it in kind of one shot, okay? And so I knew it was a very hard morning for her because one of her uh, little egg uh, was blown out was blown out of her uh, poor nest and it landed on my driveway and by the time I saw the egg you know I you know it was a big long fall because it was the plum tree of mine it's not a real plum that you can eat it's just a uh, uh, just uh, you know whatever plum tree that we have and uh, I know that's where her nest you know because you can tell she always just jump over there if she's scared but after a little while she's not even scared of me in any way it's so funny I'll tell you in a minute okay so nothing much I'm just like using the color and just kind of pulling it out okay as I go so for this area okay and so I wanted this area to be a little bit brighter because of the Sun and so I uh, I'm going to um, this is about as much as I will go and then I'm going to use a clean brush and start pulling out the color okay pulling out the sepia color And so it was heartbroken, the egg was cra crash, okay, and uh, so um, uh, I was very sad for her. I knew she's sad, but there's nothing we can do, you know, like it's nature, right? It's just kind of hard life, you know, they live and they, uh, and so one of her egg is gone. But I think that she still had eggs because she's still, go still going back to her nest, okay, I, s I saw her does that. 
she's a very good mommy. And now going to the burnt umber, okay, the little bit of burnt color, brown color, and I'm going to just uh, lightly brush on top, okay, so there's some mixing there, so it's not totally just a sepia color, because I think that that would not be too close to the natural color of my Robin, okay? And so dear Mrs. Robin um, did that, but uh, it was still, I know she still has other kids, now, because why I will keep telling you the story. <laughs> okay, there you go. And there's her back. And that's like about as much as I wanted to do. But then I'll come in with the detail brush and I will show you a little bit what I am going to do here. Okay, now, so what I'm going to do is like there's some uh, shadow area over here. Okay, shadow area sometimes I use indigo and sometimes um, I use. Uh, Sometimes I use indigo and sometimes I use um, uh, a pink spray, but I'm going to do a little bit of the mix here and then I'm going to put some green down here so he can be like some more reflection of the background. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Hmm. Let's uh, go in and do that. Sorry, my phone just rang. Somebody just called me and it was my husband and so I didn't answer him. So I was a little bit distracted. <laughs> Okay, now let's uh, do the shadow part because, um, you know, there's really not much in this uh, bottom area that we needed to do of the beautiful mommy. Okay, and so we'll just uh, do that so that we can see that it's a shadow. I mean, round up the shape, okay, because this is the area where we want to push back, right? The tummy part. And so we just wanted to um, do a little bit of the, this grayish color, not too much. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is also a dark area, so don't worry about it. Okay. Just put some shadow color, shadowy color over here. Okay. Now in the, I'm planning to um, do the the um, the back the background uh, with some pink lilac. I know that most of the lilac around here are purple, but I'm going to do a pink one because I just wanted to, okay? And uh, because that will reflect off of her. Now this is uh, this green I put it in here is just a reflection, okay? Reflection of the atmosphere and the tree because I also see uh, my neighbor has a lilac bush and one time, one day, not one time, one day, day I saw her and she just jumped on the bush just looking at me, I think she was waiting for me to finish because even though she's not really shy of me after a little while, you know, she still doesn't want to be too close friend, just an acquaintance. And so she was waiting for me to finish watering. And so I thought, oh, that was so cute, you know, that she was doing that, okay? And so this will help you a little bit to make the form look a little bit more roundish, okay? Instead of, um, instead of just a circle laying on the on the sheet okay so what I did is just I used that uh, while this is still red wet I don't mind I go in uh, with some paint spray and just uh, put a little bit more there so hopefully to to you and me it will be further pushed back okay this area okay that down here okay and so now uh, let's work on uh, let's work on these these area okay now we need to have a little bit of um, intense color to um, I'll show you to suggest uh, um, to suggest the the curving and the cupping of the wing uh, of the of the feather okay and that is very very important to me that we do that not just to me just to artists and we, we should do that okay because that's a little bit of um, more of an indication right uh, to how she really look like the finer details okay now I just uh, I just use uh, after I put some intense color I quickly go in there and uh, and uh, soften it up okay put some so it kind of disperse okay and so uh, when I go out and water she just uh, stay there and watch me most of the day you know and uh, <laughs> um, I have this uh, peonies I told you that I, I show you the really uh, pretty dark red one but I also had two um, I, I talked to you about it. it's called uh, Sarah Reinhardt a uh, Bernhardt sorry Sarah Bernhardt and they're very very pretty pink okay and that's the tree where I I knew at the time 
Okay, I'm just further softening that area. But isn't that pretty? You suddenly you see the the different um, you know the different texture, right? It looks like there's uh, one cup and another cup over here, and that's very very pretty. Okay, and I told you that in this area because I uh, I can put green or I can put pink on there, but let's just put some green, okay? Uh, because you know I don't want suddenly some pink color. Now why why is it that I can put some green color there? Because it is uh, the highlight of of her head, and so she also reflect the the area that's around her. And when you do that, you put some green here, then it make her suddenly so she's very consistent. Now so in this same area too, okay? I'm gonna put a little bit of a darker green, maybe some indigo mixed with like. Also what I'm doing is I'm taking my indigo over here and I mix it with some of the pearline green, okay? So, and because it's a dark area, right? And so I'm gonna just lay that on top right here. Okay, and don't mind it going over to the other side. Okay, so that's kind of pretty. Okay, so um, let me see. Okay, now we're gonna let this dry because uh, and go on to her. You know, let's go to the environment first, okay? Before we go on to her feet, uh, to her leg, um, because um, we're gonna go in with a detail brush and just do feather stroke here and there, okay? Now and so what um, I was telling you is um, I was uh, so let's use um, let's uh, sorry I'm just jumping all around the place which is quite like me right I'm always like that um, let's use some uh, magenta color and we will we're gonna just lightly do lilac because this year I didn't do lilac with you guys lilac is one of the things that I really like to paint but so I'm going to have suggestion of a pinkish white lilac okay it's very easy it's very easy, meaning we're gonna do it a very loose style, okay? We're just gonna suggest that this is lilac, okay? So what we're gonna do is uh, we, we're gonna use this uh, pink and maybe a little bit of the violet, the quinacodon violet that I have laying around here. Is it here? Yeah, that's right there. Okay, and so we're gonna dot that, um, but as long as we have the shape of the lilac uh, flower, okay? Then we're good, right? Okay, so let's uh, because the sun is coming from there, and so this area we're gonna put it a little bit more intense. Okay, because I think the pink kind of go good with the with the bird color. Okay, I just trying to make it more colorful because it's a happy time for her. Now I haven't seen her, um, you know, as aggressive coming out uh, anymore because I think her birds must have must have hatched. But then you know, sometimes these mother they are they are just so good about teaching their children to be quiet. I have not heard uh, any of the chup, 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 you know the little little chup sound sound of the the bird. Okay, so I know that you know they are being really quiet. But um, yeah, I, as I was watering my uh, Sarah Bernhardt, uh, Sarah Ryan, uh, Bernhardt 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 um, uh, tree. Uh, I see, okay, I'm going to leave this alone for now, okay? And then I'm going to do another one right there. Um, she actually will just, uh, almost under my feet, she go into the, she go into the um, base of the, the uh, peonies tree and uh, trying to get, I, I, you know, I, at first I thought she was trying to get worms. I don't think so. I think she was trying to get water. Now, that, that's the way I water plants, okay? I uh, usually just leave them out for a long time. Okay, and just uh, some sticking over here, suggestion of them, okay? Because um, I like to leave them out. Uh, the water, I just put the, the hose underneath the, the peonies uh, bush and just let the water go for a long time. And I think she had get, gotten used to me, you know? So when I walk off, then she'll just usually come and um, and that's when she get the water, okay, for herself. Um, you know, I think she must because she was at that point she was still sitting on the her nest egg, and so she would just do that, and it was just really cute because I was like, okay, you're not afraid of me. You're just under my foot. I can just almost step on you. Uh, why are you doing that? And uh, aren't you afraid of me? You should be at least a little bit. But she was not. She just wanted to get her water because sometimes she think it take me too long to get out of the way and so she didn't want to wait anymore. I think that's what happened, which is uh, very uh, is insulting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, even you think I'm slow, huh? <laughs> 
And so she thinks that I'm okay. So this is uh, another of the. <laughs> it's not really insulting. I think she's very cute. I'm just uh, saying that just for fun, uh, because I think she is just uh, adorable. I'm so glad that she was around me, you know, and not afraid of me and doing fun things, you know, and. Uh, so um, she would just go get her water and then she'll be drinking because, you know, that's how she know that I have water. And I don't think that she is a stranger. Like this year, I think she's been around for a while. And so I will show you a picture of Mrs. Robin, okay? My daughter was like, yeah, see, my daughter was able to take pictures of her because she's just not afraid of us. You know, okay, it's you guys again. I'm just going to be around and do things, okay? I hope you don't mind. I don't know if she was that polite, and I grieve with her when she lost her her egg. You know, you know. Um, I hope she still stay around in that plum tree. I'm sure that she is. Okay, maybe this will be the last one. I have a little stroke over here. Erase that. Okay, this probably is the last. This bird uh, is not going to take us very long, is it? Okay, um, and so. Uh, you know, it's very, very nice to be with her, to have her around, you know, I really like her. But um, there was one winter we came home from church and it was really cute that I don't know if it was her, but uh, it, it she looked like this fluffy, this fat, you know, standing outside our chair that I have in the front of my door. And uh, we came home from church and there's this pretty robin just, oh, it was so cold that day. I think she was so cold, she was just trying to, like, be close to our house to get some warmth. And so we decided not to disturb her, but we can't help ourselves. And so my daughter really wanted to um, go out. Then they were really, really young, my, my children, at that point. And they really wanted to go out and uh, just say hi and take a picture of her. And in the process of us doing that, of course, I am, uh, I'm just a big kid, you know, I wanted to do that too. In the process of us doing that, she flew away. We wish we didn't disturb her because we really wish that she would take as much. Uh, I think she was trying to get some of the heat from the house. You know, they were so cold. You know, you hardly see bird coming out in the winter. I don't know, do we? I don't think we do. And uh, I knew that she was very, very cold that day, you know. But like, like I say, I don't think that, um, I think it's the same bird. Um, you can see when I sh uh, when when you see the beginning of this um, because uh, of this uh, painting, uh, I mean of the video, because uh, she uh, she doesn't look that plump in that picture. But anyway, that's kind of pretty hard. She's surrounded, and so I'm going to use some crinacodon violet and just a um, little bit here and there to darken this. Um, you know, this lilac, you know, indication of the flower. But, you know, when we paint lilac, probably either maybe we have time this year or it'll be late next year, um, we will have to be a little bit more, I don't know. I think lilac is very good if you use it as a supporting role to a painting like this, you know? And uh, so we'll see, we'll see what we'll do, okay? I'm after an artist. I just uh, think about things and then I do what I, what interests me, you know. The artist's temperament sometimes is really hard because uh, we don't like to do what we don't like to do, you know. But if we like to do something, then we become really excited about it. Um, anyway, so, um, and then uh, suddenly, you know, before the peony is full bloom, she's gone. You know, I mean, she doesn't come out as often. I don't know, maybe she's tending her kid and maybe she take her little chick somewhere. I don't know. But I know that she'll be around because I know where her nest is. And I think she'll reuse it. Or maybe it's just on her nest all the time, you know. Um, uh, oh, I forgot to do this part, okay? <laughs> Let me do this. This is the underside of the sepia, okay? It's the sepia underside of the of the winged part up here, okay, and it looks kind of roundish, so I'm gonna just paint that, and since it's the underside, I need to have a little bit more intense color, okay, and I'll just put that right there, okay, how's that, okay, that is better, okay, and now let's do the, the little branch that I have, oh, I'm supposed to have a little bit more pink over there, let's do that. <laughs> 
Sometimes after I, I do a composition, I, I will have forgotten <laughs> what I have decided to do. That is a very normal thing that happened to me. <laughs> you know, scatterbrain. Um, yeah, and so that uh, that uh, peony bush is already almost all gone. We only have like some dead one left or spent one because we have a very hot wave the last week or couple of days too. And then we turned back cold, but then that was enough to to disturb the the um, structure of the of the flowers. And so what I did is I I, I do that every year. It started when one of our neighbor's uh, daughter died at about the age of 15 or 16. And so I bring her a big bouquet of it, of my peonies, you know, so for the mother, because I just felt so bad. She just fall off, um, you know, she has anxiety. And so at night, sometimes she doesn't feel so well and she uh, like sleep so well. She was putting out, li putting some light. It was around Christmas time. And then she just fall, fall down from where she was standing. Uh, in a chair or something and then hit her head and so i i took flowers over and then from then on i just say hey i'm the flower actually did you know that peony flower actually lasts longer okay now let's um okay let me turn this off and i'll come right back okay okay so uh, let's uh, maybe not go into let's use the number two okay for now because uh, what i wanted to do is um kind of have some intense a little bit of burnt umber color you know and then I needed to put it right here because um, from the reference picture that I see there is a little bit of a shadow and so I wanted to do that I wish I can take more picture of mrs. Robin then I will just use her as a model but you know it's hard I don't want to scare her but anyway, I was talking to you about the peonies, and so what happened to, to uh, what happened after I start giving the f I I just give the flower away, because I know that if I trim them when they are halfway through blooming, okay, when the flower is halfway through, okay, now I change to my very detailed brush, okay, and then I'm also taking burn number, same thing, and I'm going to put it right here. to indicate the the turning of the the area above the beat okay it needs to, to I always paint that a little bit darker okay so I need to do that and then I will use some burn number and put it underneath the beak also suggests because of the shadow okay that is casting from the beat okay and then some shadow maybe over here She's getting nice, huh? Okay, and then uh, same. I'm going in the same burn number. You know, my number two or number zero brush is feathering. You know, this uh, this brush by itself, I think it's about. I don't remember. I would say at least about if it is not twelve twelve dollar. Um. Is uh if, if it's not twelve dollar, I think it is at least ten dollar, and so I. My daughter, one of my daughter already get me an extra one, okay? So I have an extra one I need to change because you see that it's feathering. I mean, it's opening. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> it's not that, uh, you know, I mean, it's still useful, but I think it's very, very hard for the brush maker for this uh, kind of smaller brush, okay? Because they are, they just don't want to behave, but then we need them desperately, right? And so we'll just put up with them. I guess I'll keep buying them. You know, I am not one who buy a lot of um, supplies because I, I, if I think about it, I guess I will buy more, okay? But I don't think about my supply very much, so I don't. But once in a while I say, you know, because we have a, we have a black, um, black art uh, store in Salt Lake City, so I just go over there and, but when I go in there, I usually, you know, just, uh, I look around a lot, okay? Now isn't that fun? You can see that the this this part is casting some shadow over here. Okay, that's what I'm trying to suggest to you. Okay, and so I'm using the burn umber color and just suggest shadow here and there. All you have to do is suggest it, and then it will just suddenly look like it's a, a chubby, 
that's what my daughter, I, I say, oh, go, when I was practicing, go and look and see if you like the rob, and if you do, then I'm going to, um, my, my, my mommy's gonna go and um, film this, and then she said, oh, wow, he's very chubby. <laughs> she is, she knows it's a she, sorry, uh, because we, you know, we know that's our Robin, right? She's very chubby, and my husband like it too, and say, okay, well, then I'm going to film it. Um, very nice. I really, um, and so uh, when the peony is halfway open, I will start giving it away to my neighbors. And now this year, I actually, I don't know how many, I have gone to DI, which is Desert Industries, our first store, first store over here. And I already uh, gave, uh, go and buy vases, you know. And because I buy, I, I don't know, in the middle of me buying vases, they they raise things 50 cents. And I was like, then I can buy it cheaper in the, in the dollar store. Ah, there's a big drop of water just uh, fall down. I don't know if you can see that, but that doesn't bother me. Look, you know, now it's gone, okay? And so that's enough suggestion, okay? I have to sometimes don't let it get um, get uh, away from me. And uh, like, uh, okay, so now I'm going in with the paint spray, okay? Uh, paint spray, what I'm doing is I am uh, suggesting feather, okay? But not a lot, you know me, I don't like things being really busy. So it's just a stroke here and there, okay? So that you can see it and you see some and you don't see some. And uh, and that's all I do, you know, that's just the way I am. Because I think that's pretty, and so I'll just do it that way, okay? Just suggestion here and there and not make things too busy. Because I think that's pretty. Okay, I said make some suggestion over here. You can see that, I think you can. And some just suggestion, just I need some over here. And uh, so I have already told you guys that it's my plan to paint, um, uh, to sell my painting in original and in a frame. You know, that's already framed. And I'm going to go to thrif go thrifting when I have time. <laughs> and then I'm going to do that. Okay, it's in the plan. It's not in my shop yet. And then, uh, but I just want to make sure I clarify to you guys that when I do those original, I'm going to do a full focus. Okay, I wouldn't be using this one. Not that I don't think this one is beautiful, but I wanted to make sure that it's like uh, more perfect, you know, that I have my full attention focus on it. And so that um, it wouldn't be something that I use for demonstration because then I have, I will have more control over the medium when I'm not talking, right? So it will be, when I sell those original, it will be something that I painted in the quiet of my studio. And so you guys, uh, don't have to worry, okay? And I hope that, but no pressure, of course, you know. I hope that maybe you will uh, look at that and support me on that. But um, just that if you like. But it's also very good that if you just do this yourself, right? And if you can do that yourself, you can. You don't have to really buy it from me. You know, and I do understand that. And that is uh, absolutely fine with me. I love it that you guys uh, do this, you know. But I just somehow feel more industrious if I'm selling some of my, uh, you know, paintings. And I like to paint them so much, you know. Okay, and what I did is just I added some of the indigo color to just further make sure that that's okay. And uh, make sure that that is uh, being pushed back that area. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the the little foot the feet area and it's very uh, simple I'm just going to use indigo color okay now you see this this uh, the line here is a little bit more intense because I use uh, I use this I use the micron because I don't want it to move okay because I, I just felt like it's so small that it's gonna move so I use my micron and go in there so that it will not move much Now, so what I'm doing is I'm putting in the co color in there just by itself for now, okay? And if I, you know, need to uh, darken the shadowy area, then I will go in with the paint gray, and those two color will mingle quite well in here. And all this drawing will be available to you, so you don't have to uh, really worry, okay, about uh, not being able to draw the. 
But then if you would like to, then you could draw it yourself. I'm going to be begin to do the process of art making with birds now, now and so I'm going to uh, let you see the process of um, doing the bird or teach you uh, if you like to uh, learn how to just see how I approach the proportion and subject and everything um, and then you can okay so now I'm using my zero brush again and then I'm going to you know do some of the darker area the area that is not facing the Sun okay darker area so that you know the and then that's done so that this will look good okay and so now uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to paint that uh, little a uh, little branch over here and then I'll put in some bushes and then we'll splash some color and then we're done can you believe that I guess the birdies are a little bit um faster huh I'm going to use sepia the same color okay I'm going to use my um my uh happy dots okay and then i'm going to do that in segment okay come in over here with uh, quite intense of a uh, of a uh, quite intense of a uh, of a pigment actually it feels kind of watery to me but that's okay i don't really mind oh sorry here you go and then i will work with it you know and i'm pulling the color out okay and as i pull i'm going to go in the direction do you see that in the direction of the um you know and then i'm going to use some liquid and soften this okay so that you can already see the branches the branches i don't want need to come in and do that uh separately okay i'm well this is usually how i do it but i like to sometimes come in separately to show you guys since in case you you can't or you um not comfortable with doing that you know but uh I will, um, you know, with this intense, you know, I'll show you, okay? You see that? You know, I'm just like kind of, do you see that I'm doing the direction? And my brush is a little bit flat, right? If we can do that, we flatten our brush. These Chinese brush are very, um, they're very uh, hardy, okay? They don't, um, they really don't um, die that fast. <laughs> I guess die is a loose word that I use. I mean, they don't just give up that fast on us. You know, they can take a lot of abuse. Okay, and then I use uh, clear water and then you can still see the line. Um, I actually have something that I'm uh, uh, making up in my mind that is still in my mind right now, okay? The process, I'm going to show you guys um, how we do this kind of thing. It's very vigorous. Um, and I'm going to make some video on how we do uh, things like this. Um, uh, you know, what, what I just did, okay? And the very, very loose stroke and very rigorous and dynamic uh, in the chi in the oriental style painting. But um, I, I, I have all the material. I might do it in, in, in this watercolor paper or I might actually do it in uh, the shuang paper, which is the, uh, the Chinese rice paper. You know, I will think about it and I will go and practice, okay? And then uh, I will show you or either show you or let you know, okay, uh, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just come over here. Just This is just for fun, okay? I didn't plan, okay? From this area, I'm going to create a branch that come out and come over here, okay? Isn't that cute? Okay, uh, do you want to do one right here? Okay, we can do one right here. How's that? Isn't that fun? Isn't that 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 is uh, that is what I did for my first ten years of um, of my painting? You know, I just do that kind of thing. I just want you guys to know that I practice and practice and practice years after years. You know, because well, you know, if I didn't have fun, I wouldn't have done that. And but um, so now I'm using my very detailed brush again, and I'm going to go in here and. Uh, you can see it's feathering out, okay? I hope that it's not bothering you guys, okay? I'm gonna come over here maybe, and you see that? And then uh, I'm gonna, lilac is like that, right? If you, so I have lilac bush, and so I have reference, you know, they do that, they just come in and they uh, branch out, okay? And then I'm going to do one over here, and the branch usually come down here a little bit, and then you might be able to see the, the branches in the, 
you know, in the flower, right? And so I think that that's very, very pretty. Wow, this this brush I keep trying to splash color. Now, but I'm not comfortable with this this area right there. So when I say goodbye, I'm gonna come in with either some leaves or some. Uh, yes, I do need to do some leaf in the in the back. I mean, not leaf, just a wash of green color, and I will do a leaf or two of lilac over here. Okay, just so you know. Okay, and uh, so I'm going to just show you guys one more time. One more time. Uh, over here, okay, and it just come out behind the birdie, and uh, and it came over here to connect with this one, and then you see the you see what I do, you know, it is it really is kind of fun. I think that you guys will like it, and it's uh, something else that I can do with you in my channel here, and it's um, you know, I know that lately there's a lot of uh, watercolorish. They don't, uh, I don't know. Um, they just uh, kind of splashing around. You don't see me do that kind of thing, but uh, I do wanted to show you that there's a traditional um, a watercolor practice that we can actually, uh, you know, use that for a lot of um, uh, a lot of things that are kind of similar to what they do, but the discipline is different. Anyway, I will, uh, you know, I will explain to you some more when I come down when it come down to that. Okay, I'm going to back this up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Oh no, that come the other way. Okay, now and so what I'm going to do for the rest of the time, after I say goodbye to you, I'm just gonna do a green wash, you know, a green color wash. You have seen me done that, and then I'm going to do a leaf over here, just so that this branch is not a branch to nowhere, um, and that's not good. Okay, and so. Uh, a, a branch disappear to nowhere is good. Coming from nowhere is not good, if that makes sense at all. And I'll do a little bit of the splash and put this watercolor in the intro. Hey, thank you so much for coming. I think you guys uh, will love doing this. I hope you do. Um, okay, let me, before I go, I, there's one important part of the bird is her nose. Okay, I'm just gonna put a dab right there so you guys can see it. Okay, all right, there she goes. And uh, so I think she's fun. And uh, thank you for your support. Don't forget, please subscribe, okay? And I really love that. And uh, thank you. And also, I'm supposed to tell you guys to like my painting too. So please like them. If you like them, then I do well. I, I do well in YouTube, and I I need to do well, you know. And so, uh, and so, um, and then uh, you guys can do it. Any question? Uh, give me a, a message, okay? You know, I try to answer everything. Uh, as for now, anyway, that you guys. Um, give me and um, that you guys send me and uh, I love you guys thank you so much for your support I just really am grateful um, for your support and coming to my channel and I will talk to you and see you in the next painting thank you